welcome to this edition of the Art Review. Now here in London, there are always so many art events and activities to enjoy. And here are my recommendations of special exhibitions to see at this time. Holbein at the Tudor Court, on at the Queen's Gallery, Buckingham Palace. Hans Holbein, the German-Swiss painter, was born in 1497 and passed away in 1543. And he's considered as one of the greatest portrait artists of the 16th century. He had an unparalleled ability to capture the essence of his subjects, and his art still astonishes nearly 500 years later. Originally in Basel, he produced religious art satire and reformation propaganda. He travelled to England in 1526 in search of work and was welcomed by the Chancellor, the famous Sir Thomas More, and quickly built a reputation with patrons such as Queen Anne Boleyn and Thomas Cromwell. And then, uh, quickly, he was appointed as painter to Henry VIII. Holbein's portraits of the royal family and those of the Tudor court are a record of the years when Henry was asserting his supremacy over the Church of England. The show tells the story of Holbein's time in England for 17 years, navigating the shifting sands of religious reform and political intrigue, creating powerful images of Henry VIII and his circle that we know today. His works have a remarkable lifelike quality, bringing you as close as you will ever come to the men and women of King Henry's court. The drawings and sketches, paintings on wooden panels of these characters are truly extraordinary. And you know, when I went in there and you see all these characters around, you could almost imagine them are thrown there and them all standing around King Henry. I mean, it's quite spectacular. And the immediacy of the drawings often gives the sense of being in a room with all of them looking over Holbein's shoulder as he's drawing them or painting them. Among Holbein's earliest royal portraits is a drawing of Anne Boleyn, a rare life drawing of her. And there's a grand portrait of the king's long for son who became Edward VI at the age of nine, but he died when he was only 16. One of Holbein's most striking painted portraits is that of Derek Bourne, a 23-year-old steelyard merchant. And we see that the artist repeatedly altered the colors of Bourne's face to give him a more chiseled, mature appearance. And importantly, the painting also reveals the clear imprint of Holbein's thumb at the left edge of the panel. It's really quite something to see. And a highlight is Henry VIII's magnificent armor. It was famously designed to be adjustable to accommodate the king's expanding waistline. I mean, it's really big. And a number of works, especially the drawings, cannot be on permanent display for conservation reasons. So this is an exceptional opportunity for visitors to see for themselves the exquisite skill that made Holbein one of the greatest draftsmen who ever lived. Holbein at the Tudor Court is now open at the Queen's Gallery, Buckingham Palace, until the 14th of April. Next we visit David Yarrow, storytelling at Maddox Gallery, Mayfair. Internationally renowned fine art photographer David Yarrow is a master of storytelling on a grand scale. Whether he is channeling the magic and the brilliance of the big screen to tell his own cinematic stories or shooting wild beasts in their natural habitats. I asked David about the exhibition. Because the show is in London, it's, to me, it's appropriate that quite a few of the pictures here have been created in London. 
in London for London. I'm a great believer that you give people what they want. Let them eat cake, let them have the kind of pictures that resonate to the audience. I, I travel around the world, but pictures in Africa and pictures in Montana are gonna have less resonance perhaps to a public in Mayfair, London, than pictures uh, that tell stories of this incredibly storied, world famous city, the best city in the world. So we have taken our storytelling from the plains of West Texas or the mountains of the Rockies back to London. Of course, in the show, we have pictures all around the world. We have pictures here from, from Wall Street, from Route 66 in America, to, um, to the, the African uh, wilds. But there is a very much a London vibe to, to this and gritty London, not contemporary London. I much prefer going back in time because it adds a kind of character for free. Uh, so we have pictures here that are taken in London in the 1920s, London in the 1930s, and uh, New York in the 1960s. Uh, so it's a real hodgepodge, but uh, hopefully the collective, the sum of the parts is, is strong. David Yarrow's storytelling is on at the New Mattis Gallery in Mayfair until the 26th of November. And so finally we visit Tomorrow I'll Be Perfect by Andrew Salgado on at the Saatchi Gallery in collaboration with Beers Gallery. I know I wanted to be painting heavy, but it sort of depends on what works. Um, it's early enough now that I can do stuff and not stress, um, and I can just see where the show kind of, where the show takes me. I'm really taken with the powerful energy and colorful impact of Salgado's paintings and how he has evolved his style since he began large-scale portrait paintings over a decade ago. He is pushing the boundaries of contemporary figurative painting. And looking at these works, I'm reminded of a modern dynamic artist Gauguin. And in this show, subjects are depicted in a fantastical, often ominous tableau, sort of visual excess that unfolds upon the painted surface like some chaotically orchestrated puzzle. The works are heavily based on his love for literature. And so Gardo states, tomorrow, I'll Be Perfect is about that inspiration and aspiration to find betterment. As artists, as people, I think we consistently eek towards our truest expression, our best selves. My entry to this body of works is sort of a play on that idea. There seems to be a lot of disembodied heads and figures desperately trying on new identities to see what fits best. And sometimes I feel like life is a bit like that. The 41-year-old artist graduated from the Chelsea College of Art in 2009 and now is regarded as one of the UK's leading figurative painters. He has exhibited worldwide with his critically acclaimed solo exhibitions. At auctions, demand for his works have frequently doubled their estimates. He actively supports a number of charities and is a frequent advocate for LGBT causes. He lives and works in London, and we know for sure we'll see much more of his work in the future. Andrew Sogardo at Saatchi Gallery, Chelsea, on until the 7th of January. Thank you for joining me for the Art Review, and I certainly look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye.